what's going on guys? Dale Valor here from Modern Valor Dating. Listen, as always, I always read the comments. They're super important to me because I want to see what it is that you guys have to say. Whether it's a video suggestion, whether you're just wanting to chop it up in the comments and talk a little bit deeper about what the video was about. You know, whatever the case might be, I'm always open to reading the comments. I read them all, I comment on all of them. Now, this wasn't a comment, but it was a suggestion. And I was like, you know what? I've touched on this before, but I don't think I've done a whole video on it. So I wanted to do that now. How to pull a threesome, okay? You know, this channel is predicated towards dating and relationships. And we delve deep into all kinds of things, your mindset, inner game, outer game, all those types of things. Sometimes it's time to get down to the nitty gritty, start talking about some strategy, some actionable things that you can go out there and do step by step and make it happen. Maybe you're a guy that's never had a threesome before and you're like, yo, I wanna try to get this popping. Maybe you have and you wanna do it again. Maybe you got a girlfriend and she's interested and how, do you gonna, how are you gonna arrange that, right? That's what we're gonna talk about today. That's what we're gonna get into. And so we're gonna hop into it right now. Let's get it. Number one, talk it out. Okay, here's the deal, man. Now, this is going to be a little more predicated towards guys that might be in a relationship that want to try to get this popping, and it might make sense. Okay, look, sometimes fantasy should stay fantasy. Sometimes it shouldn't. Okay, now, if you're in a long term relationship and you know your girl is super jealous, but she seems like that she'd be down, uh, you may want to think it through just on the strength of. You know, it could be something that ends that relationship. So you don't want to jeopardize that if you care about that particular relationship, okay? But if it's feasible, if it's going to make sense, talk it out. What will it look like, you know? Now, look, if this is two girls you're kicking it with at a bar or something like that, this isn't really the forum to really, like, have a deep conversation about it, okay? This is more in the context of somebody that you've been seeing somebody that you've been dating, a relationship that you're in. But at the end of the day, make sure that you're on the same page because there might be things that she's willing to let you do with another girl and some things that she's not. And if you don't have that conversation ahead of time, that could be something that really puts a rift inside of that relationship. And is it worth it for one night? If you're willing to jeopardize it because you don't care about the relationship, then you probably shouldn't be in that relationship to begin with. But that's not my call. That's your call. And so at the end of the day, though, I really think having a conversation, talking it out is what's most important. And one side tip to that, don't do it in the bedroom. Don't try do it while you're banging it out. Do it outside of the bedroom where you can actually have a rational, logical conversation. Because what are you going to do if she likes her better than she likes you? Huh? You know, we always think about it as guys that like, well, she might get jealous that I'm more into the other girl, which is a distinct possibility. But what about you? How do you feel about it? You know what? I would like to know how you feel about threesomes. Put them in the comments below and I'd like to get your take on you know, the different ways that you've worked it through, or if you want to have one, you never had one before. If you've ever tried to pull one before and it didn't work for you, what do you think went wrong? I'd just be curious to hear what uh, your thoughts are on that. All right, we're gonna get to number two, let's go. Number two, unicorn method. All right, so you're trying to score a threesome. You've already talked it out. Say you're in a relationship. And this is kind of where the, this particular method is gonna come into play because you already have to have a girl lined up, ready to go. I guess it doesn't have to be a relationship per se, but you at least have to have a fuck buddy or something like that, friends with benefits, that is down and willing and you're looking for a third. Now, this is the unicorn method, all right? now. I will say this, I'm not a huge advocate of going this route. You can try it. I'm not saying that it doesn't work. But what I am saying is you're one of about a billion other people trying to do the same thing. All right, so your odds of success are not going to be that great. Now again, you know, there's certain people who get out here and kill it, okay? So I'm not saying it doesn't work and it's worth a shot, but I would try doing some of the other things that we're gonna talk about in the video as well, okay? But here's the unicorn method. Basically, you put a profile out there on dating apps saying that um, here's a picture of me and my girl. 
or you use the girl as bait, so to speak. You know, she's looking all sexy. She's like, hey, I'm attached with my boyfriend, with my partner, with my FWB, whatever the case might be. And so we're a package deal. If you want to get down, just know it's a package deal. Now, again, there's way, way, way more people that are out unicorn hunting than are unicorns. Why do you think they're called unicorns? because they rarely exist. It's a needle in a haystack situation because you have all these couples who are all down, but very few just single girls that are like, I just wanna link up with a couple that I don't know. And as a matter of fact, I can't vouch for the success for this personally because I, it has never ever worked for me, okay? And again, I'm just keeping it real. I'm not saying that it can't work because I know people that it has worked for, but I wouldn't think that it would work with uh, a lot of consistency. Just take that for what it's worth Go out there, try it, maybe it lands, but I would do these other things that we're about to talk about as well. All right, we're gonna get into number three. Let's get it. Number three, social circle. Now for me, this has been the best proving ground for pulling a threesome. And the next point too, that we're gonna get to as well. Uh, this one and the next point are really the two that have worked for me the most consistently. All right, so in your social circle, many girls are open to at least some form of sexuality or sensualness with another woman. I think that we all know that it's been well established. Women are much, much more malleable with their sexuality than men are. If you have a conversation like we talked about before, or you just happen to know two girls, maybe one's a fuck buddy, maybe one's just somebody you're really cool with, things like that, and you have a conversation with her about like, hey, what's up with uh, Lisa over here? I think it'd be hot if we all got it popping, you know? Um, she may be down. Now, if you know Lisa, you know Lisa well, Lisa's a part of your social circle, you know, uh, some night where you're all together just hanging out, it can just kind of pop off if you lead. And that is the thing about a threesome, and I'm gonna touch on that a little bit more. You as the man have to lead. Think of yourself as the director of um, a sex scene. Okay, you, if you don't lead, they are not gonna follow. One of those other girls are not likely to take the lead and it's never really gonna come together. So at some point in time, you're going to have to state the intent and really get it popping. Every position change, all that, you should be the one that's leading that dynamic. If you've got girls inside of your social circle that you think could be down, this is a way that you can arrange it. And I'll give you a little bit of strategy on how to do that in a uh, later on in the video, all right? All right, we're gonna get number four, let's go. Hey guys, wanted to take this quick time out just to remind you, if you have not subscribed to the channel, make sure to do so. You are doing yourself a favor by making sure that you see all the content that we drop three times a week. Because look, if a situation arises, man, where you didn't have certain information, it's going to cost you. And why put yourself through that, right? So make sure you subscribe. Make sure you hit the notification bell. Make sure you hit the thumbs up. Make sure you drop a comment, man. We always read the comments. We always respond to them. If you have a video idea, whatever the case might be, we want to hear from you, all right? Make sure that you share it with somebody that you know needs to see this content because I know that you know guys who need to see what we're doing here. So check this out too, guys. We just dropped a brand new virtual program called the Modern Valor Dating Crash Course. And what we're doing there is giving you almost everything you need, man, for, for free. It's 100% free. All you have to do is go to transformyourdatinglife.com. There's over 30 videos there, a boot camp that we shot, you know, just giving you all the information so as that you can focus on inner game, outer game, calibration, approach anxiety, opening, building comfort and rapport, closing the deal, man. Also, the last Saturday in June, we're going to be doing our live Zoom event like we do the last Saturday of every month. We're going to have it linked up here. All you have to do is go register and show up. It's 100% free. We're going to be talking about shaking off the rust. See, here's the deal. We're coming out of COVID. Things are opening up. The world's starting to kind of transform back into what it used to be. Even if your area, wherever you live in the world, isn't opened up yet, it will be 
before too long. So why not get back on the horse, man? Get back in the game. You know, instead of sitting on the sidelines, we're going to show you how to reinvent yourself, how to transform your situation, how to get back out there and get out there and crush it. Number four, the sex club. All right, so here's the deal, man. Now, this is the place that it's uh, worked for me the best. And that's if you go to kink parties, play parties, um, BDSM parties, events, things like that. Because these are people that it's a very hypersexual atmosphere. It's very, it's just a thousand times easier because it's more accepted. It's not just accepted, it's almost expected, okay, to really get it popping with more than one girl in that night, okay? Most of you guys, I'm gonna go out on a limb and say that you've never been to such an event or wouldn't even know how to find such an event. I'm gonna break it down to you like this. There's a few different websites that you could go check out. Reddit has stuff on it too. The main one that I would check for for events would be FetLife. All right, that is going to tell you where all those types of parties and venues and things like that, the dates and, and everything. And, and a lot of these places, you have to apply, okay? You can't just show up one day, all right, knocking on the door. Because, you know, look, again, it's a hypersexual atmosphere. They're not going to just let anybody in the door, okay? Because you never know who you could be letting in. Some of them have interview processes, you know? So it's not just you just show up. Do it, apply. If there's an interview process, do it. You know, the first time that you go there, you're likely to be somewhat nervous. And I get it because it's a very foreign atmosphere to you most likely get over your nerves and get up and just start talking to people less gaminess the better you know just be 100 authentic just have really good conversations and start building rapport and comfort sooner rather than later once you become an established member of that community you've been coming to these parties you know it can definitely happen at a party like no doubt about it you know like it's way easier to do at one of these parties but as you become more a member of that community and people start seeing you as a familiar face and a guy that people need to get to know, all right, now you can start pulling these girls into your social circle. So you can take the social circle point that we talked about, add it to this. So now you're working these threesomes through social circle and you're working them through at a sex party, BDSM party, whatever you want to call it, okay? So yeah, man, it, it's a process and it's going to take a little bit of time probably to get through it. But once you're in, you'll be good as long as you don't fuck up, all right? Uh, that's basically what it boils down to. All right, we're going to hop into the next one. Let's go. Number five, or organically okay so you're out at a bar you're at a club you're at a friend's house you're wherever you are there's two girls and you want to try to get with both of them what i would do is this i would start screening to start seeing how open they are sexually with either each other or other women things like that and there's different things that you can do to find that out fuck marry kill is a good way to do that that's basically a game where you ask them to you know if you don't know it's pretty commonly known but if you don't know you're picking out three people and they have to fuck one they have to marry one they have to kill one okay and so if you pick out two girls and a guy or three girls for them you know what i mean and and if they're being super sexual about like oh i totally get with her and things like that and they're very open about it and things like that okay that makes it a thousand times easier than if they're just like insistent on that they're 100 percent straight like oh i would never do that like oh oh that's so gross you know or whatever so look that's the thing screen for that first but once you get them in the place to where it can kind of start popping what i like to do and now i got this um i'll give credit where credit is due uh there's a guy named steve p okay who uh he was in the book the game and he's been around a long 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 time used to work with hypnotica maybe still does i don't know i got this from him all right and it's called the dual induction massage it's old school pua and i, I don't know why guys like really kind of frown on old school stuff do what works works why reinvent the wheel it's good to be at least somewhat knowledgeable about massage okay you don't have to be some kind of massage therapist or something like that 
just as long as you have a basic working understanding. There's YouTube videos for this, you know, just so you can have a basic understanding of it. And it helps in a thousand other dynamics inside of uh, doing game because if you can show that you know your way around her body, that only bodes well for you, you know? So like I learned how to do like a really dope hand massage. So while I'm sitting here talking to her and I'm giving her a hand massage, she knows that I know what I'm doing just based off of that. What you want to do is, you want to really upsell it. Hey, have you guys ever done a dual induction massage? And they're gonna be like, no, what is that? I'm like, well, listen, it's something that I learned way back. It feels just like a thousand little hands all over your back, just working the knots out, just working the muscles. And it just, it's so intense and it's just so much better than a regular massage. Here, I'll show you guys how to do it. Here's how the dual induction massage works. All right, so we'll say you got two girls there, right? They're at your place, you're in your bedroom or in the living room or something like that. Preferably you want a bed, but a floor can work to stay away from a couch. Now here is the thing, the one that you have the best rapport with, that you're the most comfortable with, you want her to be the reciprocate of the first person to get the dual induction massage. Say you're most comfortable with Lisa, and then you got Jacqueline there too. What you do is you get Lisa down on her stomach. She's laying face down. You are instructing Jacqueline that's on the other side of you. Here's you, here's her facing me, and here's the girl laying face down on the mattress. I'm gonna start giving her a massage. Now, Jacqueline is going to do the same motions that I'm doing, but on the other side of her, okay? Now, what I'm gonna suggest after a little bit, I'm gonna be like, this will be a thousand times better if you pull your shirt up or take your shirt off or whatever. We've all seen boobies, we're all adults, not a big deal. Now she's the most comfortable with you, okay? So she's a little more apt to, to do it. I'll even say like, do I need to actually turn around? Like, is this necessary, you know? But nonetheless, she'll take her shirt off. Now she has her shirt off. So now we're doing the massage, okay? And you know we work it out and all that kind of stuff. And then maybe for five, 10 minutes, and then we're done. Now it's Jacqueline's turn, okay? Now, she, now this girl already has her shirt off, okay? And I'm gonna unhook her bra if she doesn't take her bra off just so I can get into behind her bra and all that kind of thing. So she's gonna get up and I'll be like, all right, well, take your shirt off, you know? So now they're both topless, okay? Now Jacqueline's getting down, all right? Now Lisa's on the other side of me. And so now everybody knows it's starting to get a little more sensual. The, the kino that's going on there, the feeling, the touch, everything is escalating. You know, maybe I've got a couple of candles going, you know, things like that. The sexual tension is starting to build at this point. So now we're doing Jacqueline's back, okay, me and Lisa. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to lean in and I'm gonna, have, I'm gonna direct Lisa to lean in because she's following my motions, right? I'm gonna lean in and I'm gonna start making out with Lisa over top of Jacqueline, okay? Jacqueline's gonna turn around to see what's happening and then Lisa's gonna lean in and give her a kiss. Now things are off, things are popping, okay? That's how you make that work. So listen guys, a little bit earlier we talked about social circle, all right? Now listen, we did a video a little while back on social circle, how to build that out, how to foster it, okay? And so we go really, really deep on that. So what I want you to do is go take a look at that video. If you wanna really learn how to build out your social circle and then make things like this happen, dude, that's the way to do it, man. So I will see you there.